life can be challenging, but maybe, maybe art is some way a, almost a, a break from that challenge. You know what I mean? Like it helps you break the routine of that worry, the routine of that, um, mulling, you know, it just, you just break it, you get present, you get creative, use your imagination. You go, I'm just going to do this. And like, and you know what? I bet if you could just string along a bunch of things where you just said, I'm going to think about what I want to do right now, really truthfully create. And you just went and created it. You'd probably work through a lot of that past and, and future nonsense. That's just kind of weighing you down, dragging you down. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. All right. Welcome to another episode of our show. Um, we do, uh, we do this thing now, uh, called the artist's wisdom series. And this one's with Frederick Buchner and it's a pretty long quote. Evan's going to read it out in a moment, but, uh, with these, we thought, you know, wouldn't it be good to go to an artist or someone creative or somebody who maybe pushed out of the norm a little bit and shared a little bit of their wisdom. And maybe we look into that and we explore it and just kind of see, you know, dig into it, you know, because sometimes you hear a quote and you're like, you know, that's really cool. It really hits me. It really lands with me. But do you stop and you really investigate it? Do you really look into it and just see like, what are the depths of this wisdom that is actually coming out of this? Because I think on the surface, we can all recognize it, but then there's, there's always something more. And so what we've been finding is, as we look into this stuff and we dig into it, you just kind of pull out more and more wonderful stuff from these these great things that people have left behind for us, um, you know, as, as artists and creatives and just, you know, people who want to do something in the world that maybe is an expression of ourselves or of some thought or an idea or a feeling. So anyway, um, Evan, let, let me pass it on to you and, uh, maybe you can read this quote off and, and maybe even tell us a little bit why it hit you. Uh, mm. I'd be interested to hear that. We'll All, get right. Into it. All right. Uh, so this quote, if anyone's listened to any of our past episodes, I don't know how many we've done, maybe like two or three, two or three other ones of this artist wisdom series in the past. Um, so this, this quote's a little bit longer. So there's a number of pieces. I think we're going to probably, uh, I'll read the whole thing, but I think as we go, we'll probably just have to like break it down in chunks and take it in, in pieces. So, uh, it goes like this literature, painting, music. The most basic lesson that all art teaches us is to stop, look, and listen to life on this planet, including our own lives, as a vastly richer, deeper, more mysterious business than most of the time it ever occurs to us to suspect as we bumble along from day to day on automatic pilot. In a world that for the most part steers clear of the whole idea of holiness, art is one of the few places left where we can speak to each other of holy things. Mm. And again, that's Frederick Buchner. Uh, and uh, Frederick Buchner is an author. He's written a number of books, um, but he's got an interesting background. He uh, he went to theology school, um, so you know he's he studied religion and and things like that. But he never. Um, he never went into any kind of ministry or anything like that. He went and he studied it and became an author instead um, <laughs> uh, and wrote just sort of wisdom books, but also wrote fiction books and, and things of parables and things like that. So this is a person who um, definitely has an interesting background and uh, experience as far as um, where they're coming from creatively. So um you asked me why this quote stuck out to me. And I think that in part, when I first read this quote, it was from, um, it was from a book called, I think listening, listening to your life 
or something like that. And it's basically, it's a book of almost like daily meditations. So it's like you, you, there's like an excerpt from one of his many books that he's written that, um, you know, kind of read this thing and it's something to sort of sit with for the day kind of a thing. And so I suppose on one level, why it stuck out to me was because it, it was one of the few quotes that he had in there that directly pertained to the arts, you know, to, to creativity. So there's that, there's just that kind of very basic element of it that I thought was really interesting that he was speaking to it. But I think that the other thing that really stuck out to me is that it was pointing, he was pointing to this, to this extraordinary power and meaning to art, you know, on, on such a deep level of, of what great art does, you know, like we've talked about many times, like, you know, art is, art is one of those things where it's like, you, I, I don't think it can really be defined. Um, even though it does have many meanings, like you can say so many things about art and they're all true and, and, but at times not true. Um, you know, so it's, it's one of those art is something that you can probably always have a conversation about and uh, about what its function is, what it does. Um, and there's some themes that I think that, that come out of it, but there's never a point I think where we say, this is what art is. And I really just enjoyed this perspective that he had to bring on it coming from his background. Mm. Um, uh, and I'm sure that he would agree as well. It's just like, well, art is much more than what he's written in this one particular quote. But there was something about this thing of, you know, and, and maybe we just dive into it now. Um, you know, that first section of, of how art, um, how art asks us to, to look, to stop, look, listen to life on this planet, including our own lives as a vastly richer, deeper, more mysterious business than most of the time it ever occurs to us to suspect as we bumble along from day to day in automatic pilot. It's a very long sentence. It's a very long sentence. <laughs> but, you know, all of those things, all of those ideas are all connected to each other. Um, but he says that this is the, the most basic lesson. So he's not really saying what it is, what art is, but he's saying the most basic lesson of art is to stop, look, and listen to life. Um, both our own and just in a in a greater perspective as to 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 look more deeply into it yeah so um yeah i don't know there was just i was uh it it still captures me with its poeticism and the beauty of its words and and something that is just so profoundly true uh about those words so i'm gonna stop I'm going to turn it back to you. Brandon, what are your thoughts? Um, well, okay. One thing is, is like, the, you know, defining art can be a challenging thing. I think that you, you can define it, but with art and like many other things actually, but art, art in particular, it's, it's, uh, it's more expansive than whatever definition you're going to put on it because there's usually a, um, an incomplete understanding. And I find this with a lot of stuff, you know, I find this with story and like, like, like what is an idea, you know, wh whatever. And I think that when we are, when we're working from an artistic place, we're, we're looking sometimes at things that are not always so obviously art. And, and I think with, with art and the history of art and, you know, whatever, we don't need to get into a big thing about that, but like, you know, modern art and then what was like, um, you know, realism. And there's all these various types of things that people have come, come across where they said, well, this is art. And people go, is it like, you know, you put it up in a gallery and you make us look at it. Is it art? And it's like, well, in a way it all is art, you know, everything is art. And, um, you know, there is a, there is a certain narrative to, to art and, 
when you're when you begin to study art a little bit more and you kind of find a, a certain appreciation for it you begin to see that even in the most basic thing there's a narrative you know there's a story to the art and um sometimes you can look at a uh, you know, some product of art, some piece of art, some, some element of art. And you're like, well, I don't, I don't see the art in it. But if you knew the narrative, you would see art in it because you would understand in the context in which it was created and how that might've been revolutionary or new at the time. And art has this way of continually outdating itself. You know, like it's, it's like, uh, what was new one day is just normal and taken for granted today. And so you don't look at it as art because it's just become a part of your life. But at some point, someone, you know, came up with that idea or stumbled upon that idea or ventured into exploring that idea. Right. So now, now to wrap this kind of back around, you know, this, this, this part of, you know, um, our own lives, right? Our own lives being almost this kind of mundane thing, this, this, uh, you know, this just, we're, we're just doing our lives. You don't know sometimes if your very life is like, you don't necessarily always see the art that you're creating in your life. And, um, you know, I think this is where like the kind of, we talk about this a bit in the podcast, the law of appreciation, the law of appreciation is kind of that. Why don't you stop? Why don't you look? Why don't you listen? You know, and just, just take this in for a moment. Just see, just, just like, cause we're so busy. Like I gotta be there. I gotta get this. I gotta, you know, achieve that or whatever. And why don't you just stop for a second and just acknowledge, you know, Hey, this is what's happening. This is, this is what's going on, you know? Um, and it's so easy to miss the art in life because you're so busy, so focused on getting somewhere or doing something or whatever. And the art is happening. But th that's kind of the, the wonderful thing about art in that it, it's often happening without you realizing it. Mm -hmm. And I think like with this podcast, you know, what, what we do in some form is we, we stop and we try to acknowledge something that maybe gets overlooked. And through that, maybe it helps us be more informed in where we're, where we're going with this or how we're looking at these things we're trying to achieve or get to or go to. Um, because, you know, you know, I think, you know, you and I have both lived long enough and experienced enough to realize that the destination is, is sometimes wonderful, but, but not really the point. The journey is also very, very important and also often more the point, but, you know, are you rewarded for acknowledging the journey? Well, yeah, not explicitly, not, not so obviously that's something that you have to recognize the rewards you're getting. Right. And, and so I kind of like that element of it, you know, there's lots mm -hmm. of elements that I like, but the stop, like look and listen, I think is a little bit of like, let's take in the journey a little bit as we're going along, um, going to do whatever we're going to do and getting to where we're trying to get. Um, yeah. 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 Like a deeper recognition of the life that is going on around us and the life that is within us. Um, cause yeah. And, and that whole element of like, as we, uh, as he says, as we bumble along day to day on automatic pilot, you know, like not really just lost in our, our thoughts of things lost in our, um, lost in just sort of all of our, our just ideas and judgments and opinions and, and things like that. When there's this life that is, that is going on. I mean, that's part of it. Don't get me wrong. That's a, that's a very big part of our lives too. Um, that's doing things and shaping things in, in ways that we probably don't fully know, but there's these moments where I think presence has a lot to do with this, where we just become so present to the things in our lives and, and these moments are, are so breathtaking when we are present to them. And sometimes they sneak up on us, you know, when we're like, you know, standing out on some viewpoint, looking out on some incredible vista or something like that, where we just suddenly, it's like, we just get shocked out of our, our sort of patterns, you know, and we become so 
consumed by the beauty of something, you know, like I think that most of us can, can trace to like, we can think of the, Oh yeah. I remember that like a moment where, you know, you saw something, something so extraordinary that it just shook you out of your days, you know, that you didn't even necessarily realize that you were in and made you feel something. And I think that that's a lot of what he's saying in this quote is like, you know, we're in this sort of days and, and, the the for the most basic lesson of art is to kind of sometimes shake us out of that daze, mm. right? To to bring us out of that um, that sort of stupor, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say like yeah, like you know one of the things that I've um, just in sort of my own words and coming from a person who I got into acting because I don't know I had certain certain natural talents and a disposition towards it, but also because I loved the movies. Um, I loved movies and the excitement and the adventure and the, uh, oftentimes escape. Um, but also all of these big extraordinary human emotions that, that were in them. And, and for me, what I truly love about film, or at least what I, I, for me, what I feel like a great film does is it takes ordinary moments and it shows us how how completely extraordinary they actually are Mm. you know and um and a movie that just popped into my head and it might seem like a strange pick here but it's the one that just jumped into my head so a movie i really enjoy is adventureland i haven't watched it in a long time um it was with um Oh, why can't I think of? Is it the zombie? It's not the zombie. Oh, it's not the yeah, zombie. Yeah, yeah, not, 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 not the zombie one, but it's the same it, actor. It's but where they Jesse did they, Jesse Eisenberg. He, yeah, but he ends up at like a like a theme park type thing. Yeah, and yeah. But there's no working, zombies, <laughs> right? But it's like more of a like a coming of age love story. Yes, yeah, and you know, really, the story is is yeah about this this kid who just kind of you know doesn't really care about the town he's in takes a summer job working at like the you know this amusement park and and sort of romances and and little dramas and there's nothing extraordinary about this in so many ways but there is something for me at least I felt like there was a a, a sincerity and honesty a kind of heart to this that was just true and and being able to watch that and and connect with it to connect to what is actually very ordinary of, you know, a kid getting a summer job at an amusement park, you know, like what, like what, you know, and just the, the relationships that, you know, you had mm-hmm. friendships and, and whatever, these are, these are all things that we can relate to on like, or at least a good number of things. Most of us can relate to these things and, and have experienced a lot of these things, but we don't, there's something about when we a, a, a film that says like this is special you know like there's something about this ordinary shit that we all go through that's fucking special yeah you know like and like how but how often do we think of of those events those sim- like the same kinds of events in our lives with that same kind of reverence you know what i mean mhm yeah you don't always notice you don't always notice what's going on like when you're in it. Like, um, and I think one of the things about, you know, getting a little bit older and having some, you know, memories to look fondly upon, um, is that you, you know, you, I don't think, I think people can get trapped into the whole idea of like longing for their youth or whatever. But like, when you look back and you're like, well, you know, I had these moments, you know, and, and they're, and they're kind of a nice, they're a nice thing. And I think with art, you know, I love stories like that personally. I mean, they're, they're some of my favorite stories are about mundane shit that is recognized as special or, um, appreciated, you know, so to speak. I I shared the story before I'll just share it real briefly, but you know, there was a moment I remember, uh, there's a girl that, um, I used to date and, you know, we, we were hanging out one day and it was a lazy Sunday or something weekend day or something i don't know just a day and uh 
every day is the weekend for me, but uh, <laughs> it was one of those days and we were just sitting around this afternoon. It was a nice sunny day. And uh, we started talking about like, what would the perfect sandwich be? And we're like, well, you'd want bacon and you'd want eggs and you'd want avocado. You got to have avocado. You got to have cheese. You got to have whatever. And so we said, okay, well, let's go down the street and let's get the stuff and let's make this sandwich. And we spent the afternoon making the sandwich is the best sandwich I ever had in my life. But regardless of that, we created the sandwich, but it just kind of going like, this would be awesome. Let's put it together and make it happen. And like, you know, cook the eggs and put the avocado and the bacon and just we just had the sandwich and it's one of those things like sometimes we'll, we'll chat and you're like, you remember that sandwich, <laughs> it like, but it was just a day where we made a sandwich, you know what I mean? But it was like, um, you know, no one else would really care, but it wasn't just the sandwich. It wasn't just that we did everything that we wanted to do to make the sandwich. It was that there is something really beautiful about a couple people hanging out creating something together and enjoying it together. And like, it's a weird memory. It's like one of those things, like, I feel like it's one of those standout memories in my life. And it just seems so mundane and so almost like not important, but mm -hmm. it like, it was like a great afternoon, you know? And you, when you, when you ask yourself, like, what would my perfect day be? That might be in it, you know, as mm -hmm. like, that would be probably a part of my perfect day. And, uh, you know, I think also like um, something that came up for me as you were talking, and I was just thinking about this was like, we spend so much time being busy, you know, busy, busy, busy. Like we got to do this. We got to accomplish that. Got to get this done. Got to be something, got to be somebody, got to whatever. And, you know, I think there's a certain element of, you know, I'm a big advocate for this is like, can you just stop and like be in your day and be with you and like, let yourself like, like without distraction, even, you know, I'm not talking meditate, but it is meditative in a way, but I'm not talking meditate. I'm talking like, like literally just be and like, like think and imagine and, 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 you know, and like, maybe you, you get yourself. So in this imagination of like, well, you know what, I I'm actually motivated. I want to go do it. And then you follow your imagination into creating something, you know, have it be a sandwich or a screenplay or a painting or whatever a song. But like, to me, that's almost the most wonderful part of this life. And I think sometimes people don't really give themselves that like they, they're so busy with their job and then their family and then their responsibilities and their stuff that, and then they feel like, you know, oh, I need this thing to be happy or I'm not really happy or I hate my job or I have to go do this thing. And, you know, I think a lot of the time or I'm watching TV just to kind of de-stress or have a drink or whatever. And I think a lot of the time, what a lot of us need is we just need some free time to just bug around and like be imaginative and kind of create and play around and like not really do anything, just kind of like you know, and then like have an inspiration maybe hit you and then follow it. And then, you know, and, and not have it be like, I'm going to make the sandwich because I'm going to start a sandwich shop and that's going to be the greatest sandwich shop in the world. You know, like there's no agenda. It's just, you just thought, Hey, I want to do this. And like, why don't I just, you know, and then maybe you don't even do it, but maybe you just sit there, but there's a joy in the whole, like, you're this being that can do that. You know what I mean? And there's, there's a, there's an art in, in, in having, uh, a, a beingness and, and, uh, a, a free time. Right. Um, and, and I think that, you know, it's one of those things It's like, it's good to achieve. It's good to accomplish. It's good to do all this stuff. But I also think sometimes like we pursue happiness in such a boring way. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to like, I'm going to become this. I'm going to achieve that. And like, that'll make me happy and I'll be good. And it'll solve this problem. And it's like, it's very like, uh, practical, you know, whereas like art isn't always practical. It's like impractical <laughs> and, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, um, but also it's void of distraction. I think that's the key thing to take away from it too, because when you're actually being artistic, you're not distracting yourself. If you are distracted, it's purely by accident. It's not like I'm going to zone out watching TV. Like that's not creativity. That's almost like 
like that's a break from stuff, you know, maybe you're watching TV, but you're not watching TV to break your, your, it's just on, you know what I mean? And like life is kind of more like that. When you look at the art of it, it's like your, your job and your job is just on, but in your world and in your, in your life, you could be creative at your job. You know, you're, you're not, you're letting yourself live while you live. You know what I mean? And that's kind of a weird way to say it, mm-hmm. but, but that to me is kind of one of the things that stands out a little bit about this art, because like, that's kind of what art is like a little bit. It's a little bit like you're letting life happen as you're living. Cause like, think about it. You're watching a movie that's art, right. And then, or you're looking at a painting or listening to a song and you're living life as you're living life. You know, it's not often not really even happening. You might be listening to a song, you might be crying or, 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 or bopping your head or doing whatever you're doing, but like life is happening while life is happening. And that's kind of the, there's these layers and levels to art. You know, it's, it's this, um, it's, it's all, and, and this is the kind of inter- interconnectedness to it. I know it's kind of like weird little airy fairy, almost some, some of that stuff I said, but like, this is kind of the thing that I think is interesting is like, we don't always notice that our life has this wonderful art to it. Yeah. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I love that you brought in, you, you mentioned at one point, but you know, uh, appreciation and, and really this, this whole, this whole, how incredible it is, um, to be able to be human and to be able to do the things that we can do, you know, from it's like, wow, look at that. You can, you can just think of the most amazing sandwich <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can, you can go and do that. And all there's, there's every element of, of that process is so extraordinary you know, is so extraordinary. And the whole thing is, um, is all a little bit mysterious, you know? And I I think that that, that's not an airy fairy thing to even say about it. You know, it's like when you really truly contemplate life, (laughs) you know, the fact of, of the fact of being here, right. The fact of being a conscious being, being here in this world in this universe is fucking mysterious yeah like it's it's the more you think about it that like there's no escaping that that point and it doesn't mean that we we don't we haven't learned a lot of things about our existence and and some of where we come from but there's huge huge gaps to what we know (laughs) To what we know as human beings, you know, like it's like how we're here is, is just baffling, you know, and that sense of wonder and awe is another, I think a big part of, of this whole, um, this whole thing, you know, um, in terms of look, pay attention, like just, can you be, can you just be in awe at that this is even here. And the only way that you can, you can really, I think, stand in that place is by admitting to that mystery, you know, and that's, Mm -hmm. and that's not me saying anything about like, I don't want anyone saying like this, that this has to do with any kind of belief or religion or anything like that. I'm not saying any, like, in actual just thinking and contemplating life like that to me is a natural kind of a place to arrive Mm -hmm. you know is is that mystery and that's that's part of his quote that's part of buchner's quote in here that this is um how does he say um a vastly richer deeper more mysterious business than most of the time it ever occurs to us Right. Mm. Like it's, it's more mysterious. It's more, but it, we have to, 
we have to stop. You know, we kind of have to stop and be still in order for that thing to happen. Because as you said, like we have, we're, we're so busy being busy all the time. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're so busy being busy, so busy thinking about things. And, um, I'll just say one more thing and I'll hand it back to you, but there was something in what you were, you were saying just before, uh, it reminded me of like a, a little story. I, I think it was probably Alan Watts. It was probably Alan Watts knowing us. Um, but there was, uh, a Zen teacher, Zen master who came one, one of the first ones who had come to, to North America from, from Japan and said to this group of people who came to, to see him speak. Um, I said like, you know, when he's like, when sitting, sit, when standing, stand, you know, when I eat, eat, when you sleep, sleep, you know, like this was sort of him imparting some basic Zen wisdom. Right. And, you know, some of the people who came to see him, it's like, well, what, what the hell are you talking about? I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I do all of those things all the time. And the response from this master was like, was like, no, you don't. He's like, no, you don't. When you're eating, you're doing all kinds of other things other than eating. When you are going to bed, you are doing all kinds of other things but you're never really doing this thing. You're thinking about all of these other things. Most of us are just constantly thinking, occupying a different space than what's actually present, what's actually real and right in front of, front of us in our lives. Right. Um, so I think that that's, that's another element to this, this wisdom, this quote that's being said. It's like, it's like, stop, look, listen, Mm -hmm. check out of, check out of this imaginary world that most of us are living in, you know, thinking about something that happened before in the day, thinking about something that you're doing later in the day, thinking about something that happened fucking years ago, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and we, we just, we live in that so often. And again, I guess kind of coming back to some of, of what I was saying before is like, it's like those moments that just kind of smack you across the face and just go, wake up. Yeah. Like wake up to the life that is here, that is happening right in front of you. Yeah. 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 You know, there's an insight kind of, uh, blossoming. Um, (laughs) it's kind of like, uh, you know, stop and smell the roses. I was just thinking about that, you know, stop (laughs) and smell the roses, right. Or whatever. It's like, stop hanging out in the future. Stop hanging out in the past. And just be present. Doesn't mean like, and people are like, well, I'm so busy getting somewhere. It's by all means, keep walking there, keep going, keep driving, keep going on your way to where you're doing it. But like drive. You know what I mean? Like you're mm-hmm. you're here now, driving, walking, hiking, whatever your thing is in, in your travel, you know, but like recognize that you you are in it, you know, because this will be a memory. And like the, the, when I was making that sandwich, I wasn't thinking this is going to be special one day. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about this on a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was just in it. We were doing it. We were putting it together and we were figuring out like, you know, what's going to make this thing awesome. And like the bread too, the choice of bread, like everything was, everything mattered. Everything was meaningful. And, and the fact that we could, you know, I like, I think like, what better way to appreciate living in North America at this time, or at least at that time where I could just on a whim, just decide to get the best ingredients in the world and put something together for, for fun, because that's just what I want to do. And I'd never had it before. No one had ever made this for me before. Uh, you know, and we were just like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? And that to me was like, I think why I remember it so fondly because it was really a stop and, and smell the roses type of moment. It was a very much of like, let's like, and when we were doing it, at least in my experience, I can say this. And I I think for her, it was a similar thing because she remembers it fondly, but you know, we were just living, you know? And, um, 
And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, like life can be so stressful and anxious and we worry and we feel guilt and shame and we beat ourselves up and we do this whole gamut of stuff that just gets us away from the moment, you know, and we have fears and we're trying to protect ourselves. So we're like, you know, looking into the future or we're trying to make sure we don't make the past mistakes. So we're in, caught in the past and, you know, there is a, there is a, an escape from life. And I've been in both. I've had um, a, a challenging time, a period in my life where I could not get out of the past. I just didn't know how to do it. I know what to do. It was brutal. And I was just constantly thinking about the past and what happened. And there were some, you know, I, I had what most people probably consider some legitimate reasons. There were some betrayals. There were some big changes. There were some, you know, shifts in life. And I was trying to figure out what the fuck happened and like, how do I make sure that it never happens again? And why did that happen? And trying to really work that out, but it was brutal. Like it was, it, you know, there was a certain amount of it that might've been okay, but like, there was a lot of it that was like, it just sucked. And I did not know how to get out of it. And then eventually I kind of worked through that and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to live in the past anymore. And then, um, what then what came next was, and I never really had this for most of my life, but then there came a little bit of period where it was like worry about the future and what, what am I going to do and what, how am I going to work this out and how am I going to figure this out? And I think everybody can relate to this type of thing to some degree, right? Because we're trying to, we're trying to be okay. We're trying to be safe. We're trying to take care of things. Um, and, and I think that the past and the future and the fact that we can jump between both is an amazing and incredible thing but it can also be a hell and you can live in a hell. And like, um, what I can say, like coming out of that where I'm mostly present now, I do slip into worry. I do slip in sometimes to the past. I can catch myself. I can see myself doing it. And then sometimes I can't get out of it immediately, but I can kind of work my way out of it. I have some strategies, but, um, what I can say from, from that was that it becomes quite painful. Um, cause it really sucks to worry all the time. It kills your creativity. It kills your art. It kills your, your ability to relax. It can cause all sorts of like ugly feelings inside of you that you don't really want to feel. And, um, not to say that there's anything wrong with the feeling. Cause sometimes the feeling is what motivates you to get the hell out of there, but being stuck in it and feeling like you can't escape it. And then like, if your solution is I need to pop a pill or have a drink or watch a show or do something like this, and that's your way of dealing with them. I mean, that really sucks. And like, I know because I did it. <laughs> so if you're doing it, like, I'm not, I'm not by any means looking down my nose at you. I'm saying like, I get it. Like, I totally understand. Like, you know, I played video games and watched movies and that was like a big way for me to just, I cannot think about the fucking past anymore. I, I can't keep going over this betrayal. I cannot keep reliving this mistake I made. You know what I mean? Um, but when you can get past it, um, you know, there, there's something wonderful about the present element of it. But I do think that there is a necessity of getting a little bit stuck in the past and a little bit stuck in the future as a human being. I think it's actually an important part of our evolution and our growth and our working this shit out. Um, so I think if you're in it, what I would say to you is like, first of all, I want you to accept that this is a natural, I mean, look, you, you make your own opinion. I'm telling you mine. You don't have to take this as the word of God or anything like that. <laughs> it's just my experience. So, but I can say, look, if you're feeling stuck in the past and you don't know how to get out, or you're just worrying about the future all the time, I would suggest just accept that that is a natural part of your human experience, that it's a necessary stage to go through to work it out. And it's okay that you're in it. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with you. It's, it's very common, very natural. And you, you will be in it as long as you need to be in it. Um, and if you need help, ask for help, you know, like work it out. But the idea I think with art is what art, well, I love art so much is art really helps me to bring back my life to a present moment. When I, when I'm doing it, I get in flow, I get creative, I get into my imagination. I'm not so worried about my ego, who I am, what happened in my past, what's going to happen in my future. And so, um, you know, something that's kind of coming up with this whole talk is I'm going, yeah, you know, 
life can be challenging, but maybe, maybe art is some way a, almost a, a break from that challenge. You know what I mean? Like it helps you break the routine of that worry, the routine of that, um, mulling, you know, it just, you just break it, you get present, you get creative, use your imagination. You go, I'm just going to do this. And like, and you know what? I bet if you could just string along a bunch of things where you just said, I'm going to think about what I want to do right now, really truthfully create. And you just went and created it. You'd probably work through a lot of that past and, and future nonsense. That's just kind of weighing you down, dragging you down. You know, I'm um, one last thing I'll say, Evan is just almost all my mentors always say the same thing they, they, in, in their own way, but it's always really the same message. It's just like, I want you to be joyful. Like it's at the end of the day, like when, whenever they're helping me or they're just like, it's just, I want you to be happy. I want you to feel good. I want you to, you know, like, I like seeing you happy. I like seeing you, you know, you be you, you imagine you play. I mean, it inspires me when you are. And, and I think, yeah, sure. They probably get something out of that, but I actually genuinely think like my friends and my mentors and people like that in my life now, at least they just generally want me to be happy and joyful. Not like the temporary happiness, but like, just, you know, being good in life, you know, feeling like things are, you know, I'm, I'm living and not, you know, not stressed out or worried or anxious or any of that nonsense. Right. Which we all get. Um, and I, you know, I, I think with our audience, it's the same thing I wish upon them. You know, I just, I want you to be joyful. I want you to feel like this life is a beautiful life and um, not a drag as I know it can feel sometimes, you know, but I think that um, that's kind of something that has been spurred on with this conversation. I mean, that's kind of something that's coming up for me a bit. Yeah. Hey everybody, this is Evan. And this episode is brought to you by my book. Yes, I recently released a book called The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft. Expand yourself as an actor and your craft through a spiritual perspective. Take a journey that will explore universal philosophies and insights to help you understand human nature in a profound way and develop practices to take your work to another level. Again, that's The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft, available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. And as always, if you like the show, please subscribe. That's, um, man, there's a lot that, uh, we could jump onto here. Um, what I was really getting from a, a, a lot of what you're saying is that, you know, art, whether, you, you know, when you're really doing it, you know, like if you're actually creating something, um, or when you're taking in a really incredible piece of art, no matter what medium it's in, um, it connects us to a different part of ourselves you know it, it connects us to something that i would dare say is more meaningful you know like what's actually important what's actually meaningful to us as human beings in our lives and and we're connected to each other through that um as artists you know you try and communicate that thing to other people to connect with them to get so that we all feel connected and to each other and through some way you know it's like Hey, ever been in love? This is what it was like for me. <laughs> right? It's like, oh shit, yeah. It's like, hey, have you ever had your heart broken? Yeah. Yeah, fuck. That was that was shitty. Hey, have you ever, you know, like, have you ever felt so um alone, so so unimportant? Have you ever felt, you know, like all of these things of of being human, right? And having human experiences and we go, shit, yeah. You know, like we <laughs> <laughs> like we keep on writing the same songs, telling the same stories, all just in different ways. Um, but all these things that truly matter to us, mm. you know, because really it's just like all of this other shit kind of falls away in the face of certain things, certain events, certain hopes and dreams in our lives. Like every, nothing else really matters. Um, and I think that, that, art is one of those places where it strives to do that. And I, I suppose in many ways that takes us to like this kind of the second, the second half of this quote, um, which I really want to make sure we touch on. Cause yeah, like we really just covered that first sentence, that first extremely long sentence. Don't get well, me wrong. And, and the middle <laughs> a little bit, you know, like yeah. where, yeah. 
but it's um bumble along yeah we, it was we, bumble along day to day but that's all one sentence like oh from, oh that is uh, a sentence oh yeah it is yeah. All, yeah it's all right. one sentence it's just huge okay um, so we did we covered the first half let's get into the second i agree in the second is, yeah because yeah. and i think that this whole thing of meaning is actually a little bit of this the second half of this this quote just in a world that for the most part steers clear of the whole idea of holiness art is one of the few places left where we can speak to each other of holy things and you know i want to just kind of substitute that word for a second holy yeah um, because i know that it that can trigger people it can trigger people and and it's a word that needs um i think probably we need to it needs to be rehabilitated uh, yeah <laughs> um in our in our minds as to what it means because it's tied up in a lot of shit but it's still a good word i'm not gonna say because i i think that it's it's there's a, this is almost a sidebar, but sometimes I find that there are these words that we have such a such a trigger to them, um, which is why I'm always like, maybe it's time to just rebuild a new understanding of what that word is for you because it's obviously a powerful word for you. You know what I mean? Holy is one of those words for people where it can be yeah. very triggering, but it's like, yep, yeah, that trigger means it has power. Right. So instead of fighting that power, why not redirect it, you know? And, re and, and also I wouldn't just say redirect it, but, um, and not, not to get you off, but reclaim it mm -hmm. for yourself in your own yes. way. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. So in this sense, holy is like, what, what is the shit that matters? What is the, what is the shit that's really true? You know, like that, like in, from the depths of our, our being as human beings and, and all of this stuff, love and loss and, you know, the, all of these big themes that, that the arts dive into, you know, that's what he's saying here. These are the holy things. The things that matter are the holy things. Um, and that art is one of the few places left where we can still talk to each other about it, mm -hmm. you know? That's incredible. So in in many ways, it's 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 almost like a a different, mm -hmm. you know, this this that second part of this thing. It's kind of like we have two different stories going on that are connected, but there's a bit of a different thing going on. Okay, let me throw this at you, and let me just see what you think. Um, what if holiness means, or something that we could maybe um, play with is like, what if it means vulnerability? Because I was thinking about that. It was like. Um, read this sentence in, in a world that for the most part steers clear of the whole idea of holiness of vulnerability. Art is one of the few places where we can speak to each other of vulnerable things. Mm. You know, like there's something about this, this world that we carry inside of us that we don't always share with the world. You know, it's, it's scary. It's frightening. It's, but it's the most, true most meaningful part for us and and it's our it's our it's ourselves and like um like look i'll throw this out to the audience and maybe you guys can relate maybe not but like um you know this whole idea like would anybody really love me if they knew who i really was mm -hmm. really knew everything about me if they knew you know every bad thing i'd done if they knew every flaw i had would they really love me would they really accept me would they be okay with me and, um, you, you know, that's, that's a frightening thought because I think there is a large part of our, um, you know, our, our existence, our society a little bit where we, we think, okay, well, if, like I'll be vulnerable, but like to a degree, uh, but the rest has, I kind of have to have a mask. I kind of have to have a presentation. Like I have to a little bit, you know, play the game with everybody so that they don't think I'm a weirdo or they don't think I'm, you know, you know, whatever. And everyone else is playing the game. And if I don't play the game, then I'm going to stand out like a sore thumb as this kind of weird, you know, person that has this unique thing. And I'm like the only one that has, it. and the truth is everybody has it, or a lot of people have it and they're just hiding it. And, and there's actually, I, I, I found as I've gotten a bit older that a lot of art is the courage to actually be vulnerable and share those things. Um, and not just in what you're creating, but in, in a lot of the time with relationships, some of the things that have bonded me the most with some of my best friends in this world, yourself included, is that I opened up about the things that I just 
didn't want to talk about, you know, and, and then, you know, friends, people who really care about you, they often come back and they, and they give you some perspective on it and they go, you know, like that, I, I felt like that before, or I get that, or, you know, maybe you could try this, you know, or, you know, um, whatever. And you just, you know, when you keep it secret and bottled up, you kind of feel like a weirdo because no one else is talking about it. Right. You feel like you're the only person that like struggles with that. And the truth is, I think a lot of us struggle with a lot of the same things in different ways, but often the same kind of idea, same type of thing. Um, and art has a way of like letting us, I think, have a healthy outlet for it. Um, you know, because I don't always think the answer is talking to a therapist or talking to a friend about this stuff. Sometimes I think it's about working through it in a creative outlet. I think that's actually the healthiest way for you to process some of this stuff because mm -hmm. you're being productive, you're building something and you're not reliant on someone else's opinion or acceptance of it because the truth is not everybody is going to be ready to accept your truth and your vulnerability. And that's just because that's where they're at. And you might, there, there's probably someone out there who is, but you might not know them yet, or you might not have a personal relationship with them yet. So you don't have anyone to share with. So art is a good medium where you can at least temporarily um, work through some of your stuff on your own terms, free of judgment, free of, um, you know, this type of thing. And I'm not saying holiness means vulnerability. I'm just saying maybe there's an element of vulnerability in holiness that I don't know. I'm just starting to see is possible right now. Uh, yeah, no, and and I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm almost sort of inclined to think that like, oh, maybe holy, like, you know, at the start of this, we were talking about how art is one of those things where we can define it, but that's never really the full th aspect of it. I think that the word holy, at least for me, is it encapsulates so many of those things. It is vulnerability. It's meaning. It's what's true. Um, you know, it's that, it's that real part of ourselves that is that is crying out to a certain degree and and i want to just say like and crying out not just you know because sometimes you say like there's a crying out it's like that that often comes with thoughts of like oh it's like it's it's sorrow and it's you know or it's anger or whatever mm -hmm. it's like it might be but it can all it can be anything you know it's like it's this the part of you that's crying out to be to be heard in some way, to be seen, to be recognized for someone to say, is anyone else seeing this shit? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> right? Like, or, you know, like do, and, and again, like seeing this shit is in like all of it, you know, like the beauty as well as the, as well as the things that, that horrify us and terrify us, you know, it's like that, that voice that just doesn't get the floor very often in, in the way that our society and our culture is, you know, that doesn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just like, no, 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 you get, get your shit together and get back to business, right? Punch your fucking card <laughs> at the end of the day. No one wants to hear it. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's, and we're seeing the limitations of that in, in our culture, particularly in the Western world. We're seeing that they're like, yo, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. People are, people are, so are be, are be getting unhappier and and their like mental illness is like you know this this whole thing just doesn't work you can't just shut humanity off inside of us anymore right and and to me that's that's another element of this holiness it's like what what what's holy what's human mm -hmm. you know what's living <laughs> you know like it's it's um <laughs> you know, oh man like it's just yeah, it's such it's, a big word i think that's pro that's part of the problem with holy but i still think it's a great fantastic word because it's like you know it's also sort of like what's sacred and again there's a lot of baggage that's tied up in the word sacred but it's like because philosophically you could say well it's all sacred you know like yeah. the buddhists would say all of life is sacred not just well, the things that are moving around but the rocks and, uh, you know, and the air and air, it's like, it's sacred because it's yeah. here, you know, and it's that presence, like the first part of this quote, that presence, like, stop, look, listen, this shit is sacred. Yeah. <laughs> like all of it, you know, and in art, we can talk about it without feeling so weird about yeah. talking about it. Totally. 
It's, it, you know, it is important. I mean, well, you bring up a really good point and let me comment on that before I even move on to my other thought. It, it, art lets you talk about things that sometimes are very difficult to talk about and very difficult to approach. And I think that there is a wonderful part of art. And, and also I would, I would say like, um, I would extend a, an olive branch out there to, to, to comedy and humor, mm -hmm. humor and art. Um, they can be good friends in a lot of ways because they can let you kind of explore some things that just they're no go zones. You just don't talk about it. You don't, you don't do anything. Right. Um, the other thing too, as I will say this with any word that triggers you, um, don't blame the word itself. Look at what you're triggered at about the word and, and like how maybe it was used and, and, and what was done with it that bothers you. Because like, when I think of words that bother me or have triggered me, or I'm sensitive to it, or I know that other people are sensitive to it. I think about like, well, my problem with it is like, it was manipulated. I felt like it was used. I felt like I was, someone was trying to control me. And I like, look, I'm going to just tell you my opinion. This is my stance, but I fucking hate being coerced. I hate being manipulated. Do not pressure me. Do never give me an ultimatum because I will call your fucking bluff. That's my stance in this world. You know what I mean? And, and when someone goes, you do this or I'll do that to you, I go, fuck you. That's just my stance. And I know there's a lot of people that have that stance, but you know, and it's just like a strong, strong defiance to being controlled, manipulated, coerced, and whatever. So, um, is a little bit of pressure good? Yeah, it can be all right. It can be fine. It can be healthy. It can be good. You know, when you're raising children or you're learning to teach dogs or pets or animals and stuff like that, you know, sometimes a little bit of pressure can be good, a little bit of uh, pain, but you, you want to be, you want to be mindful about how you are with everything and how things are with you. Um, because there are things that sometimes they actually do us a disservice. So you could be defiant in a way that actually harms you. So to give you an example, like when I was in school, my dad was very authoritarian. He was, he was good in a lot of ways. He taught me a lot of great things, but he was very authoritarian and very like, um, my way or the highway, you know, and sometimes his, his methods, I didn't always agree with, and I didn't like, and I developed a mentality of like, um, I'm never going to let anyone control me. You know, that's something I grew up with. Um, and in a way, like, um, sometimes the more control he tried to put on me, the more he couldn't control me. And, and this played into my school experience, my education experience, because you'd have these teachers become very authoritarian. Um, and I, I already had that experience and I knew how to say no. And I knew how to defy, but sometimes they would be teaching something that maybe I actually wanted to learn. But if they taught me in a way where they tried to coerce me or pressure me into it, I just wouldn't do it. And so like, um, there's these words or these ideas or these systems that can trigger you and you want to try to look at it. It's like, look, I don't mind if you give me a little motivation. I don't mind if you pressure me a little bit. I don't mind if you do it and I feel like you're doing it to help me. But if I get a sniff that you're doing it for your own agenda to get power over me, to manipulate me, to control me, you better fucking watch out. You better watch the fuck out. And a lot of people have that stance because we live in a society that has battled authoritarianism throughout history. You know what I mean? So uh, you look at words like holy and people attribute authoritarianism and things like that. I don't want your religion. I don't want you forcing your belief system on me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't see it the way you see it. Don't make me see it. I'm not going to even use this word holy. You know what I mean? So it can kind of come at you like that. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say is like, look, the word isn't the problem. It's, it's how it was used. It was who used it. it was, it was how you interpreted it. It was how it was presented to you, but the word in and of itself might not carry what the user was trying to use it for. Um, and there's, um, there's a whole study and I, I encourage anybody who's listening to this podcast to just venture into it just a little bit, just a touch, just so you have a little bit of understanding of it. It's called NLP neuro, 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 neuro programming. Now you 
have a meaning that you attach to every word. And what neural linguistic programming does, NLP, is it makes the meanings of words, it uses the meanings of words to basically um, persuade you, but it also uses them to coerce you, manipulate you, trick you, deceive you, brainwash you even. So it's very important to understand what NLP is because you might have a meaning of a word that it doesn't really mean that, but someone got you hyper-focused on that element of it. And now it just becomes a no-go, no-fly zone for you. You just can't even go near it. Um, so when I think of trigger words, I, I try to look at it that way. as like, um, can I break my... Uh, judgment, my bias to this word, my, you know, like there was a long time where the word spirit really bothered me. It, it bothered me because I felt it was manipulative. Now I use it quite commonly and, and often, but I healed the word in my own world. I understand I'm sensitive that some people haven't. So I'm mindful of that as I share that word or use that word, but, um, words are powerful. They're very, very powerful. And we don't always realize it. So um, you know, you might say negate this entire quote just because the word triggers you and it's a shame, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so I think that's something, you know, as we're, as we're working through this, right. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely worth, um, something it's, it's worth exploring. And, uh, it just reminds me of this, uh, again, good old Alan Watts, something I read from one of his books, which was basically like, your relationship, the relationships between things is as, is as real and concrete, if not more so than the things themselves, mm. you know? So there's this word holy, right? It's just, it's just a word, you know, <laughs> like it's just, it's just a word. All of that, whatever baggage a person might have tied up into that, that's, that's your relationship. Yeah to it you know it's like and and so that was kind of interesting because i was like oh yeah for sure like because like you can have a strong reaction to to something like like that word and it's like wow that reaction is is the most real part of what's going on here right like it's you know the most intensely felt of the whole thing so can i can i step in for one yeah, sec just yeah um, I, early, very early on in this podcast, I talked about art and how there's a narrative to art and how there's um, a story. And you might not recognize that art is art um, because you don't know the narrative behind what created that art and what the time was and whatever. Words are like art to you too, right? We don't know the narrative of why that triggers you. And there's an art to your relationship of that you and that word, right? Um, mm. and so it's, it's an interesting just kind of thing to, to recognize. And I'm not saying I have the solution for you. I'm just saying that your awareness of that is freeing because now, now it's a zone where you can at least entertain it. I don't say you have to use it. You don't have to, you know, whatever in your own mind, you can kind of replace it if that's what you need to do, but your narrative matters and, and your narrative like um, one, one that we often use in acting and we use in storytelling is the word mother. You use father, whatever, but like we all have, we all know what we mean, but we don't all mean what we think we all mean because we all have a different relationship with our mother. And there are many parallels and similarities, but we each have a different little bit, at least in a little bit different. And so mother means something a little bit different to each of us personally in our narrative. And like, mm. it's, it's, it's something to keep in mind as you're navigating through language, right. And linguistics. Mm. Yeah. It makes me think of something I remember reading in a Dan Millman book, which was like people's is something like people's experiences are so, are so different that it's amazing that we agree to anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you, know, you wonder if you're agreeing to the same thing you think you're agreeing to too, because you're saying the words, but do they mean what you think they mean? And do you mean what they think you mean? You know, like it's, yeah. um, yeah. I mean, we, we think we all think we're saying the same thing, but we don't always, always say the same thing in the way that we think we're saying it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's part of the fun of being a human being. Totally. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, beer? beer? Yeah, let's do let's do the beer. Let's, and let's wrap beer. this one up. Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. I, I I'm gl- I'm really happy with what we explored. Let me go first on the beer. Um, right. I'm really happy with what we explored today. This was really nice. Um, you know, uh, this quote is every time you've you've pointed it out has always landed with me in a way. And and all I would say is like, look, um, there's lots of wisdoms and things that people have shared. Um, this one included. I would say like, if you're triggered by a word or something's happening, like, um, don't don't deny yourself um, the opportunity to to gain something or to look into something just because it's uncomfortable. Um, and understand that, you know, look, I could have a sword and you could have a sword and we could do very different things with that or a blade or a knife or whatever, right? And, and some of us can do surgery with it and some of us can murder with it, right? Um, and is it the blade that is the problem or is it the user of the blade? And so, um, you know, with words, it's kind of like that. Words are, can be like a knife, you know, they can cut you and they cut you deep. Um, and then they can leave a scar and the word can kind of linger in the scar, you know? Um, so uh, that's one element that I want to point out. It's just, you know, healing those wounds, freeing yourself of the baggage of those wounds is, is a good thing to do just in life. And then secondly, you know, I will say this is just, your life is actually, even if it seems mundane, and even if you just seem like you're just kind of going through it, even if you feel like you've wasted time, I can tell you that um, there's more in it than you probably realize. And, uh, you know, one thing that art does, at least in my experience, has been that it helps me actually see kind of the beauty in very simple things. And, it gives me a great sense of joy when I am able to have a moment of recognition with that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it can be a really wonderful thing. And I, you know, um, it may be serving you more than, you know, and whatever, whatever's happening in your life and whatever place you're in on your journey. I mean, um, you know, your, your life, your life, no matter how it's been up to this point, can be whatever you want. You're not bound by anything in the past and whatever you thought your future was going to be or has to be, you're not bound by that either. This is a totally new moment once again and again and again and again and again and again. You know, so um, try to try to come back to this moment <laughs> and then work from it as opposed to the past or the future. And, you know, who knows? Maybe there's some pretty cool stuff that'll come out of it. And uh, maybe this uh, artist wisdom will help you explore that further. Great. Were that, were those your closing thoughts or is that another thing? Oh yeah. Sorry. That is, yeah, it was kind of my closing thoughts. Well, I'll just wrap it up and say my beer <laughs> and then you tell your closing thoughts. <laughs> I was like, I thought we were talking about beer. I mean, that was we fantastic. I lost track. I just got into it, but you know what? That was really all I have to say. Um, this one's my cabin brewing company. Um, in Calgary, Alberta, and it's um, called Super Saturation New England Pale Ale. If you're on video, you can see this cool looking can. It's kind of retro. Um, I think I might have had this beer already on the podcast. Uh, it's good. It's it's solid. Um, you know, I'm uh, currently in a small town. It's hard to it's hard to diversify sometimes. <laughs> I I wasn't sure if I had this one or not. I think I did, and I'm pretty sure I liked it before. I, I'll like it again. Um, that's what I got to say about that. Nice. I don't, I feel like based on the can, I don't re- recall oh. that one. So it might be a new one. Um, I, I I may have had this one before, but I can't remember. Um, I'm drinking the uh, Cantina Paloma Wheat um, from Red Truck Beer. Mm. Uh, with natural grapefruit and lime. Oh, I think you did have that. I one. have had this. Yeah, I have had this. Yep, yeah, and it's all coming back to me now. Um, <laughs> and it's it's a tasty, tasty beer for the summertime. Uh, I mean, that's kind of it's hard to beat. Beer, okay. grapefruit, lime. My God. Well, we're bound to have some repeats. You know, we've done we've done so many different beers now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, Stretching back to the B and E podcast, we've done you know probably over three hundred 
and some yeah. on different beers on this show. So, you know, that's quite a bit. It's quite a variety. Yeah. Totally. Um, uh, all right. So I guess now it's up to me. Oh, yeah, God. you close it, man. You okay, close it. It's up to me to to close this one off. Well, you know, I I just want to start off by saying that I'm I'm so happy that um, we got to talk about this quote because this is one that I've I've always just um, kind of kept around and whatever. I, I this is actually a quote uh, I included this quote in my book, you know, because I was like, this is such a great quote, and I want I want more people to hear this and because I, it's, it's such a, it's one that, that says so much and, and you can just sort of contemplate this, these words and, and go deeper and deeper and deeper into it, which is, um, kind of a beautiful thing about it. You know, like that part of the quote is about looking at things deeper and it's like, it's one that almost demands it of itself as well. So I think that, um, wow, silence. I'm at a loss. I know I, I, <laughs> it's very rare that I'm at a loss for words with it because I'm like, what else is there to say beyond these words that have already been said like they're they're just they they do the thing that they're that they're also trying to 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 encourage you to do like urging us all to do which is like stop look listen pay attention to the things that are happening in your life they're so extraordinary and and this is what great artists do for all the artists out there. You know, it's just like, this is, this is one of the basic, this is the first basic lesson, as he says, you know, is like, is to try, doesn't mean that you'll succeed, but try to say something true and meaningful and vulnerable and, and all of these things that we might call holy you know, try and say these things and to get people to stop and pay attention to their own lives through it. Um, and, and what comes from that kind of recognition, I can't say, but there is something about when the gift of when someone helps us connect to ourselves and our lives and our humanity that's so important it keeps us sane it keeps us from being horrible human beings to each other when we don't forget that connection that we have with life and that connection of life that we all share I mean what could be more important than that thank you for listening in on our conversation today we hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you. Head over to our website, wayoftheartist.com, for more free exclusive material and learn about the show. If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.